Hey guys, welcome back for our third recap and review of Stranger Things Season 2. This one is for Episode 3, titled The Pollywog. And basically, I got my wish. Dustin finally got that pet that I heard so much about. I am so excited to talk about it. But first, I want to welcome Steve Weintraub. How are you doing? And uh, thank you for having me again for Stranger Things. And Mark Riley. Oh my God, this episode. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, yeah. This this episode had uh, had quite the build. Oh, and I, yeah. I think we were all going a little crazy by the end of it. Uh, jumping back to the beginning, though, picked up right where the last episode left off with really one of the funniest scenes I think I've seen in all of Stranger Things, season one included, when Dustin captured that creature that was living in his trash can that he loved lovingly named Dart for D'Artagnan, and he put it in that that uh, the box and had that conversation with his mother, and the cat was there, and yeah, I was cracking up. Yeah, this is this was a, a fantastic episode with a, a hell of a finale. Oh, um, I, I loved everything about this episode. This is the reason why I love Stranger Things, and it mixes fantasy, it mixes everything together in this uh, beautiful package. Yeah, yeah. what would you think of uh, the introduction of D'Artagnan? Uh, the intro is great. I love that they found a way to use the Ghostbusters trap. It just seemed so poetically perfect that he builds a trap and then he traps something. <laughs> <laughs> in D'Artagnan uh, and Dart, and that it's it's revealed, and, and I believe you called it, Steve, that uh, it could be the cr the thing that came out of Will at the end of season yeah. one, and then it's grown to this size. It's getting bigger. It's connected. It's all connected. We're getting more of that. Little nuggets. Um, the story just keeps expanding. More questions are answered and then more raised. It's just, oh, this one is really good. Man, poor Will. Oh, poor I Will. Know, I know. Will. I, feel, I feel so bad God. for him. He really can't catch a break. And <laughs> Not at all. You, you thought that it might have worked because of that conversation he had with Bob where Bob shared with him the story of the clown that haunted his nightmares. And really, I did think it was going to come to that at the end where he was going to shout, you know, go away, go away. And the thing was going to vanish but the exact opposite happened. And given our our skeptical nature with Bob at the moment, it crossed my mind. Did he know that by, you know, yelling at this thing that something was going to happen? And then obviously it leads to the question, what really did happen to Will? Is, is something, is he going to be in some sort of state where he brings more of the upside down to the real world now? I don't really know. I, what I do have, you think? I have so many questions. Like, I'm starting to wonder, is what's happening here in the, in in Haw I forget the name of the town uh, Hawkins Hawkins uh, is what's happening in Hawkins happening for the first time or has it happened in another place and this is the second time it's happened there are, I, I'm starting to like really wonder about everything but the fact is that Bob could also be we could be completely wrong and Bob is actually a good person and it's being tweaked with us because it's it's a little bit obvious but uh, I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen to Will. I just know this kid has been through the ringer, and I feel terrible. What yeah. tipped you off that this could have happened in other places? Was there something you saw? No, I'm just starting to wonder, because if Bob is, if, if Paul Reiser's character and Bob is, is sort of like the, the second team coming in that's maybe been through it already, and that, you know, they're, they're the replacement of Matthew Modine, who couldn't handle it the first time. I'm just, like, starting to just, like, piece together, is this a bigger puzzle than we, like, is the board even bigger than what we're seeing, and it's just we're seeing this little piece right now. I think you could be onto something. There's no reason to think that that couldn't be the case, given the extent that they go to to cover up what happened in Hawkins. Like, why wouldn't we think that in some other town somewhere else, we didn't have a group of kids as smart as these who were able to fight back? For, for all we know, this went on in other places. It also still goes back to what we saw at the very beginning of episode one, which could mean that maybe she's not number eight in Eleven's line. I think that is what they are hinting at, that she but is see, eight to here's, Eleven's here's, Eleven. But here's my question, though. In the first season, I think Matthew Modine talked about how all the other things that they had worked with didn't make it. So, yeah. I'm, so I'm just, again, this is like the, the, the great thing about television like this, about great content is that it allows you to keep guessing and it allows you to keep on wondering and look and this, this, this debate and this conversation is what makes it. This is half the fun is yeah. trying to figure out like what's going on and, and analyzing all the pieces. But anyway, it's possible that maybe eight's from a different 
place. I don't know. What do you think about well, that? Well, that was my line of thinking. I like this line of thinking, and, and, and you're right. That this is what good television does. Is what we're guessing, we're wondering, and I went immediately to the to the very beginning of season. I'm uh, sorry, of episode one. And so, yeah, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if it's happened somewhere else. And this is maybe the second event or the third or the fourth. Who knows? But mm -hmm. I, right now, I'm smack dab in the middle of Will and concerned about him. And I'm wondering, you bring up um, the the beginning of of episode one. How are they going to fit into this story? And is Bob this this character that was planted there? I think I think they're doing a fantastic job with him because it's such a parental thing to give that speech mm -hmm. that it's just a nightmare. It could be as innocent as it's a nightmare. You just turn around, you say, go away, and it goes away. Or is it something more sinister? And, and sure, and that's what S Stranger Things does so well is that it is putting it in us. Everybody might have a shady dealing. Is Bob on the bad guy's side or is he truly mm -hmm. wanting to to be the father figure for will and jonathan and 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 do this i, I it, so much so many thoughts i don't know what to think i mean this this How, episode really got me i have a question do, do we know did it establish in the first season when that sort of government building was built in hawkins did they explain I, I don't that? remember at all i mean i i got a sense that it was very you know that this is a secret kind of operation in a very small town which would add to their cover but I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't think we I don't think we went anywhere before Eleven's existence and mm -hmm. her experiments there. But I may, maybe I'm wrong on that. I don't think we did though. I'm just, I'm just wondering if it's possible that this building again. This is me spitballing and could be very wrong. But maybe there are places on the planet that are connected. Uh, it's strong, you know, like the, those Geiger moments where like, a, you know, like right here in Lincoln, Nebraska, in Los Angeles, there are these places and they build these buildings to sort of see what they can mine and they're trying to get well, access. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point down the line we see Hop's little map with the circles, but it's some sort of, you know, nationwide, if not global version of that. I was just going there too. Yeah, yeah you never know. Think alike. You, it would be very interesting to just kind of pull back and maybe that's where the people from the first episode, they're in another part. They, you know, I know we started in Pittsburgh there. If they're somewhere in Pennsylvania and there's another epicenter and then another one and another one. You never know. But uh, one thing I wanted to point out about this episode and really just the show overall is how damn well it's edited because it's not easy to pull off jumping back and forth and giving us Eleven's backstory. And they did it so well in the previous episode. And I'm glad they stuck with it because it comes across great in this one as well where... So many times when you jump back and forth, there's some sort of some sort of thing mm -hmm. that gets you there that makes for a very natural transition. And seeing what she goes through with Hop and the whole thing about friends don't lie, friends don't lie, that was Mike's thing in season one. And then it so beautifully transitions from that conversation with her and Hop to Eleven seeing and getting jealous of Max. Yep. The whole time that was happening, I was sure. I was sure she was going to walk in on something I was sure at first that Eleven was going to get into the school and her and Mike were going to completely miss each other. Like just before she got to see Mike, Hop would pull her into the car or something. So I didn't see this coming until she finally made her way into the school and Max was having a little moment with Mike. And I'm like, oh, damn. I know. I know it. I, I know it. I was like waiting for this this reunion, like when Sansa and Jon Snow got back together. Yeah. And I was just like waiting it and wanting it so much. And then my heart broke. And it's just like, no, no, you don't have the whole story, Eleven. Don't go away. And then she, but her, she's getting really, what's interesting about her character is she's really starting to use her powers in a way that's becoming dangerous. And that's interesting to me. It's like, you know, from the mother and, and, and getting their attention away by doing the swing and just being out there in the open to now like taking Max and, and knocking her off her thing and getting a little like ouchy. And you're like, oh, Eleven's, she's getting really used to her powers and then you think back on that first episode and how she used her powers eight used her powers for bad i think that's a very purposeful thing that they're doing and i love it yeah it's it's interesting <laughs> too because she she hasn't grown up like a normal nope. kid she's rebelling right now and her form of rebelling is extremely dangerous mm -hmm. absolutely all right, and then we also have um, Nancy's decision to make the call to Barb's mom. And given where the episode ends up and that it's revealed that they're still listening in on her, I don't think she's ever going to get that chance to tell her mother what really happened to her. But 
clearly that means they are going to descend on Hawkins again. And also, we haven't really spoken about Paul Reiser either and what what his what he's really after. Is he really going to help the town? Does he really want to contain all this? Or does he have sinister ideas well, as well? I, I think once we find out what happens to what we when we find out what he's going to do is going to illuminate a lot of different things, whether or not this is a repeat, if this is a, happening before, you know, uh, watching what he does with this information. Uh, that will that's going to reveal a lot. You know, there was also a line, I believe it was in this episode, that might have hinted at the the bad guys from season one not all being gone. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that came up in this episode, and it did make me think back to Matthew Modine's death, where all you do is you, you just see the Demogorgon jump on him, and then it cuts I, I, out. I don't believe that he's actually uh, dead, but that's yeah, just like well, my, my, that's the just first, my gut feeling. The first feeling. thing that tipped me off with that is when they had him at the uh, Comic-Con panel. Yeah, I'm mm. like, well then, why well, would you include him? I was wondering about that, number one. And number two, he's just, uh, you know, he's a really good actor, and like... No, he probably has some powers over what's going on. Or it could be, and we don't even know this, again, this is me spitballing, is he like number three from a previous thing? Mm. And he is trying to finagle something that's going on. Like, how deep does the rabbit hole go? go? I think oh, deep. Yeah. I think it's deep. I mean, there's a lot that's opened up in this, and it's got you thinking, it's got you thinking, it's got me thinking. I think this, I think it's going to expand even more and what a cliffhanger for an episode three that, uh, I mean, I can't wait for four and five and six. And how many we have? <laughs> this is the Not problem. Enough. And then Ten. you binge them all so fast and you don't have any left. I Thankfully, know. Stranger <laughs> Things is a very rewatchable show because I've done the season one binge three times now. Yeah. Well, because I watched it for the first time, then I watched it in the middle, and then I watched it again to prep for this. So, uh, sure. you know, there's... You know, that's what Netflix is for. You can watch and rewatch this stuff as much as you want, and it's well worth it. I hope you guys are enjoying these reviews and recaps. Please hit the comment section below and tell us what you think of episode three, what you think is to come in episode four, and we'll see you real soon for another Stranger Things season two review. Hey, everybody, Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You want to watch more? Then click up here, or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.